Hello everyone. This is your friend Saurav from Tech Kicks 10. First of all, welcome to my YouTube channel. The channel is for them who would like to learn about Microsoft SQL Server, cloud and other technologies related to the databases. I love to explore emerging technologies, fresh ideas and would continue to read, understand and share with you all. If you like my videos, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. In the future, I will also try to make the videos even more interesting and appealing through different graphics. With this, let's start with today's topic about the introduction to statistics. So now we are going to start about introduction to statistics in SQL Server. Now when we talk about statistics, what do we really know about? So the typical understanding about statistics are the query optimizer uses statistics to generate query plans that improve query performance. For most of the queries, the query optimizer generates the required statistics for a good query plan. However, in some cases, you can also create supplementary statistics or you can even modify the query design for best results and performance. When we write a query, there are rules that govern us when to use left joints, inner joints, right joints and so on. The query optimizer instead uses statistics beneath to decide how exactly it will retrieve the data and further return it to the user. When we run a similar query to different databases of varying size, maybe you know, uh, maybe 100 GB, 200 GB, or any other, or we change the query case from lower to upper or upper to lower, SQL Server always changes the query execution plan, even though the activity is being performed on a similar database and table or set of tables. The reason this is all about the statistics which generate statistics are the query optimizer uses statistics to generate query plans that improve query performance. For most of the queries, the query optimizer generates the required statistics for a good query plan. However, in some cases, you can also create supplementary statistics or you can even modify the query design for best results and performance. When we write a query, there are rules that govern us when to use left joints, inner joints, right joints and so on. The query optimizer instead uses statistics beneath to decide how exactly it will retrieve the data and further return it to the user. When we run a similar query to different databases of varying size, maybe, you know, uh, maybe 100 GB, 200 GB or any other, or we change the query case from lower to upper or upper to lower, SQL Server always changes the query execution plan. Even though the activity is being performed on a similar database, and table or set of tables. The reason this is all about the statistics which generates the execution plan. When we are talking about the statistics, we also need to know about the histograms. What is a histogram? A histogram is a graphical method to represent a data distribution. The idea behind hand the histogram is to store the data distribution of any column in a very efficient, organized and compact way. Each time when we create an index on the table, whether it is a clustered or non-clustered index, SQL Server always generates a statistics under the hood. Let's take an example of about how histogram uses using a small Excel application and 
utility. All right. Let's get into a small example of histogram using an Excel. First, what I did, I created a table with two columns as you can see and I highlight in the screen. I given the name as students and the other column as the score. Now I created different entries with the student 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on until to student 20. And I given also arbitrary numbers and scores like 100, 60, 54, 71 and so on. Now how I have created the histogram chart is first step we have to select the entire record set then you have to click on insert you can see so many charts at the right hand side you can watch my mouse and then select the one which I highlighted here which says insert statistical charts click over here you can see histograms I created the first one through this so then it actually appears this page you can drag drag out you know you can drag in drag out based on your uh, required size you want but another important feature which just I just wanted to showcase is um, at the bottom like in the y-axis you can see this ranges right so how did I bring about this data so if you highlight here you can see a small box appears right click here and come to format axis now here by default the value which comes under the bins are the automatic so let's select that automatic so you can see it's a different value so basically it's like uh, 21 to 51 they have clubbed to a certain data so when they say 21 uh, check about the row number 11 it says 21 and then until 51 it actually creates a set so we don't have 51 let's say below 54 anywhere that's actually 51 so all the data between 21 till 45 are under this range and you can understand after 51 till 81 there's another data range and then from 81 till 111 there are another set of records of scores for the students now if we change that uh, to let's say uh, bin width you can see the default value comes as 30 okay so I'm just giving a different number let's say 20 and then see what exactly it happens so you can see the data slightly is different um, I guess let's see so if it is automatic it's a value and then if I make it 20 let's say let's make it 30 let's see what happens okay so you can see pretty much like uh, the data looks like the same uh, let's say number of bins you change that to 3 then it will be 3 if you want to change that to 4 it will be again be a different value so like 4 sets so based upon the number of bins you choose the grouping actually gets changed so for example when we selected three there were three buckets now it's having actually four buckets so it divides based on the uh, the number of bins I actually create so let's say if I go back now uh, to automatic you can see the automatic value comes like three okay um, I created another one which is also there like a histogram for students that was the another um, you know uh, the another chart which you can see here this is the one and now this is how the data split for all the 20 students and this is the one which is like axis line so you can see how the trend is moving towards the hundred percent now with the understanding of the histogram let us move on further to explore about statistics and how SQL Server uses that great feature for the purpose of query optimization. Statistics are the objects stored in a database about the distribution of the data 
in a given fields in a table. Statistics are actually created in a few different scenarios. When indexes are created, statistics will be generated on the key columns of the index. Second scenario can be Statistics will be generated for single columns that are used in query predicates when auto create statistics that feature is turned on in the database level. And the third scenario can be Statistics may be created manually with the create statistics SQL command. So as we all know. So what we understand is there are three different scenarios to that a statistics can be created. One may be the key columns where we want to have the indexes. Second can be like we need to have those feature that feature enabled and then we create some query predicate and then the statistics get created. And the third might be we want to use our own script to create the statistics. Now let's demonstrate that using an example. This is my SQL Server Management Studio. First, let's create a table called TB underscore student score. In order to do that, what I create what I did, I created a database with the name as stats underscore demo, as you can see in the left hand side. Now I'm using this database using the use command. And then I'm checking if the table already exists in the database, like it does. And then it actually drops the table. So that every time I can create a fresh table, I don't want to use the old table. So that's the purpose behind it. So I select this section and I click on execute. And then I refresh the tables. So you can see that the table is gone. Now I'm creating the table afresh. So basically the table has a column which has the name of score and of integer data type. So I'm executing that to create the table. It's created. There you go. Now once you expand the table, you can see it has so many, so many different options. So if I come to index, we don't have an index obviously. If I come to in statistics, that is also not created because we have not met the three conditions which we talked in the previous page now what we want to do we want to insert any top 20 records and for that I'm in using a random function which is actually you know just inserting the records of the score values from any arbitrary numbers so each time you execute the results might be different so let's execute that Yes, so 20 records are affected. That means 20 records are inserted. Now, if we want to see the records, let's execute the step. So you can see here, these are the records of 20 different records which are created. Okay, so these are the different numbers. Now, if we go back and refresh this page, you still cannot see the indexes because we have not yet met those conditions. So in order to do that, we would actually like to do the second condition, which says that um, you know we have we can use a query with the certain predicates, right? So um, what we will do, uh, we will actually so you can run this query. It is basically the same, like it doesn't create any statistics yet, and that the same we can see in the GUI, basically in the left hand side. Now, in order to create the statistics, so we can run a query with a with some conditions and see what does happen. So basically, here I am actually trying to filter all the records which falls between 41 and 4 and 61 in the score. So if we run that, you can see there are five records which meets the condition. And now, if you go back and refresh you'd be able to see that the that the statistics is created so this is the statistics Oops, I don't know why it's not getting expanded yep now if you double click here 
you can see that this is the name of the column the data type is integer size is 4 the same which we saw and then if we come to the details we can see a lot of details like it has three groups okay which we are going to discuss in the next so that's it so click on ok now here you can see the same details while like executing this query so basically we are actually checking in the sys.stats um, uh, the object and then if we are passing the object name which we have created and use signifies the user table so it actually goes ahead and creates this you know the statistics so that's the same detail we can see here but if we want to see the details about the statistics then we need to execute the the, the part 5 which I mentioned so let's execute that so you can see the name of the statistics is changed that is the reason the old name doesn't really work so what you can do you can execute the previous step collect the name and just update that here and then through that you can see the index which is created okay so now <coughs> what I want to discuss here is a bit about the uh, you know uh, what how the index is created so now it contains a row for each statistic so basically the sys.stats this particular object what it does so basically it contains a row for each statistics object that exists in the table indexes and index views in the database in SQL Server so those all details are contained by you know uh, you know we can refer through using this object every index will have a corresponding statistics row with the same name that means this name and ID which is the index ID or the stat ID but not every statistics row has a corresponding index so that we have to be careful about so now once we execute this last stage la last statement we can see that the records are create uh, the, the we see the results populated so this command actually returns three different result sets the first result set is the header information so as you can see this the first result set is this record basically so it says that the first result set is the header information it contains the header information having some basic information about the statistics such as the name updated column number of rows number of rows which were sampled steps density and so on the second data set is the vector information so these are nothing but the vectors this section provides the details of the density the average length okay average length that is in that is in bytes actually because we use the integer and the column name basically so now for our case it's the score now if you are creating any statistics with a multiple columns then you should see all the columns listed here okay and the third data set that means this set the histogram which we discussed earlier using the Excel is the most exciting one and of course very useful part of any statistics let's go through each of the columns to see what they do first is the range high key this is actually the upper limit of the range of values that fall within this step. So this is the upper range of the values which fall within the steps. So now, if you see, these are the upper range of values. The column value is also called as the key value. So these are also called as the key values. Second column is the range rows. This says the estimated number of rows whose column value falls within a histogram step excluding the upper bound so that is what it the range rows column says eq rows eq rows is nothing but estimated number of rows 
whose column value equals the upper bound of the histogram steps. Distinct range rows. Estimated number of rows with a distinct column value with a histogram step excluding the upper value. And the last one is very important that is the average number of rows. It says average number of rows is calculated by dividing the distinct number of distinct number of range rows. Now when the distinct range rows value is 0 this column will be populated with a value of 1. So that is the reason you can see all zeros and it is also 1 for all. However, if any of the value is also 1 other than 0, then also it is 1. In this video, we have gone through the introduction of statistics in SQL Server and also the histograms. In addition to that, how they are generated that is also covered. For SQL Server, it is the query optimizer that uses the features and logic to choose if an index is useful or an index seek or six would be more efficient in the context. I hope you have liked the video and the presentation. You can also subscribe to my channel and leave comments about the video. In the coming days, I will also come up with other interesting areas of SQL Server, cloud and other technologies I would like to explore and hopefully the viewers can also be benefited out of the knowledge sharing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.